Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. The image of Nimrod throughout history has consistently been associated with a despot, an evil individual in the eyes of the divine. This interpretation has gained prominence in recent times. However, who was Nimrod truly? Who was this man, a descendant of Noah, who in some sources is pointed to as the mastermind and executor behind the construction of the Tower of Babel? The Bible, in just seven verses, makes mention of Nimrod, revealing little explicitly about him. We know that he was a mighty warrior, the son of Cush, and a great-grandson of Noah. However, countless legends and narratives have emerged around this enigmatic figure. Amidst all these stories, what do we actually know about Nimrod? We will explore both the biblical and extra-biblical sources in an attempt to gain a more solid understanding of this influential figure in early history. Throughout this video, we will also present some intriguing facts about Nimrod, possibly unfamiliar to you, along with discussing the perspectives of the Jewish writer Flavius Josephus, a contemporary of Jesus, who offered his own insights into the figure of Nimrod. Therefore, in this presentation, we will delve into the history of Nimrod the rebel son of Cush the builder of the Tower of Babel. Known as Nimrod in Hebrew, Nimrod in Aramaic, and Nimrud in Arabic, is a biblical figure mentioned in the books of Genesis and Chronicles. He appears in three passages, with the most detailed account found in Genesis 10, verses 8 to 12. Cush also fathered Nimrod, he was the first on earth to be a mighty man. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod a mighty hunter before the Lord. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kauna, in the land of Shinar. From that land he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehobothiar, Kala, and Rezin between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. In another genealogy, found in 1 Chronicles, Nimrod is also mentioned. Cush fathered Nimrod, he was the first on earth to be a mighty man. The last mention of Nimrod is found in a passage that suggests his influence and importance. He, Nimrod, shall be our peace when the Assyrian invades our land and treads in our palaces. Then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princes of men, they shall shepherd the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod at its entrances and he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and treads within our border. As outlined in the biblical texts, Nimrod is one of the sons of Cush, whose territory encompassed Ethiopia and Sudan, areas that had influence over a significant portion of African peoples. Thus, Nimrod is the great-grandson of Noah, the son of Cush, and the grandson of Ham. He is presented as a king of the ancient land of Shinar, which corresponds to the Mesopotamian region. Furthermore, he is considered an ancestor of the Sumerian people. The Bible describes Nimrod as a mighty hunter before the Lord and mentions that he became a figure of great influence on the land. In later extra-biblical traditions, Nimrod was associated with commissioning the construction of the famous Tower of Babel. According to this narrative, the confusion of languages occurred as a direct consequence of this endeavor, resulting in linguistic diversity among humanity. It's worth noting that we have a video discussing the origin of languages available on our channel, if you're interested. The link to that video is provided in the description of this content. This narrative contributed to Nimrod's reputation as a rebellious king opposed to God. Sacred scriptures indicate that the beginning of his reign encompassed cities such as Babel, Erech, also known as Uruk, Akkad, and Kalna. While he's not explicitly credited as the founder of these cities, he is described as a ruler over some of them or perhaps over all of them. An ambiguity in the original Hebrew text makes it uncertain whether it was he or Ashur who played a role in the construction of Nineveh, Kisan, Rehoboth, Kala, and other cities in the region. To some extent, he's also associated with the origin of the Assyrian people, as a possible ambiguous interpretation of the text. It's worth highlighting that Nimrod is not part of the Semitic lineage but rather the lineage of Ham. He is one of the lesser-remembered sons of Cush, 
whose other sons gave rise to various African nations and other regions, including South Indians, along with many other peoples around the world, especially those with African roots, descending from Cush, son of Ham. It was in this context that the first king after the flood emerges, mentioned in the scriptures as Nimrod. In Jewish and Christian traditions, Nimrod is often seen as the leader of those who undertook the construction of the Tower of Babel in the Shinar region, corresponding to ancient Babylon. However, it's important to note that the Bible itself does not explicitly affirm this connection. The kingdom of Nimrod encompassed cities such as Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar, as reported in Genesis 10, verse 10. Flavius Josephus, an ancient historian, believed that the construction of the Tower of Babel likely began under the leadership of Nimrod. He expressed this view as follows. He, Nimrod, also said that he would be revenged on God, if he should have a mind to drown the world again, for that he would build a tower too high for the waters to be able to reach. And that he would avenge himself on God for destroying their forefathers. Antiquities of the Jews, Book 1, Chapter 4 In addition to Flavius Josephus, this perspective also finds support in the Talmud and other ancient Jewish writings. Several Jewish interpreters, such as Philo and Yachanan ben Zakkai from the 1st century AD, share this view. They approach the passage that mentions, a mighty hunter before the Lord, in Hebrew, Jibert Syed Lifnia Yehovah, as possibly indicating a position of opposition to God, rather than before God, a similar interpretation to that found in Pseudophilo. The term, Pseudophilo, refers to the anonymous author of, Biblical Antiquities. Furthermore, some rabbinic commentators also related the name, Nimrod, to a Hebrew word meaning, rebel, attributing to him a sense of rebellion against God. While, Nimrod, carries different meanings in various languages, in Hebrew and Phoenician, it holds the meaning of, rebel. These different interpretations and perspectives provide a more comprehensive view of the complexity and richness of the narratives and the diverse ways in which the figure of Nimrod has been approached over time and traditions. Nimrod is considered and recognized as the principal leader of the Hamites, and indeed, the most prominent leader among them. He achieved the remarkable feat of gathering the descendants of Noah in a single location, specifically in the land of Shinar, which corresponds to Babylon. He managed to unite the Semites and the leaders of the Japhethites in Babylon, drawing the attention of all. However, this gathering and concentration of people in one place displeased God. This occurred because, according to divine will, God desired people to spread out and inhabit different parts of the earth, multiplying. Nimrod's endeavor challenged this will, positioning itself in opposition to the expansion of humanity. According to Pseudophilo, a text dated to 70 AD, Nimrod was seen as the greatest leader of the Hamites. Joktan, in turn, was considered the principal leader of the Semites, and possibly Javan was the principal leader of the Japhethite peoples. All these leaders were in some way associated with the construction of the Tower of Babel, as described in traditions and interpretations. In the ancient Book of Jubilees, dated to the 7th century BC in its earliest version, Nimrod is mentioned only as the father of Azurad. According to the Book of Jubilees, Azurad was the wife of Eber and the mother of Pelek. This, according to chapter 8, verse 7, would make Nimrod an ancestor of Abraham and, by extension, of all Hebrews and Arabs. Furthermore, Nimrod is recognized as an ancestor of the ancient Sumerians. They used to refer to themselves as Kushites, calling themselves the people of the black face. In an ancient Arabic account known as Kitab al-Magal, or the Book of the Rolls, part of Clementine literature, it is stated that Nimrod built other cities and became king when Ruel was 163 years old. He ruled for 69 years. The account also mentions that Nimrod saw a piece of black cloth and a crown in the sky, and ordered a weaver named Sasa to make a crown like the one in his dream. An interesting curiosity that you may not know about Nimrod is that Nimrod may have known Abraham.
About 300 years had passed according to the genealogy of Genesis 11 before the birth of Abraham. Meanwhile, Nimrod was separated from his ancestor Shem, son of Noah, by several generations. The extraordinary longevity of pre-Diluvian lives continued to a lesser extent after the flood. Shem and his descendants lived to around 400 to 500 years old. As we don't know Ham's age when he had Cush or Cush's age when he had Nimrod, it's possible that Nimrod lived for a few hundred years. Therefore, it's not impossible that he lived during the time when Abraham was already alive. Rabbinic literature also addresses this possibility. Some Jewish texts claim that the wicked Nimrod tried unsuccessfully to kill the child Abraham due to a dream that foretold Abraham would be his downfall. These additional pieces of information provide more depth to the complex history and context of Nimrod. It's interesting to note that Nimrod may be related to the foundation of the Epic of Gilgamesh, the oldest epic in literature. The epic revolves around the warrior king Gilgamesh, who is sometimes portrayed as having divine attributes due to his mighty achievements. Although a hero, Gilgamesh is also shown as cruel and depraved. These characteristics resemble the description of Nimrod. The Epic of Gilgamesh includes the story of Utnapishtim, a man who survived a flood sent by the gods by building a vessel under divine guidance and seeking immortality. This story has notable parallels with the flood account in Genesis. This could be interpreted as a possible interaction between Nimrod and his ancestors, such as his grandfather Ham or great-grandfather Noah. In another part of the epic, Gilgamesh sets out to kill the creature that caused the flood, aligning with the idea of Nimrod's challenge against God. While the two may not be directly related, there's a possibility that some sort of relationship between Nimrod and Gilgamesh influenced elements of the epic. Nimrod, like other descendants of Noah, is portrayed as a tyrant. Many of them, including the Semites and Japhethites, disobeyed God's orders to spread out to different territories after the flood. They remained in the land of Shinar, disobeying the divine will to repopulate the world. I thank everyone who has watched the video up to this point and invite you to share our channel with others interested in deepening their knowledge of sacred scriptures, ancient languages, and ancient cultures. Feel free to suggest other figures from sacred scriptures that you would like us to cover in future videos. Keep following our content, in this video that is now appearing on your final screen. See you soon.